understand what the disparity is. Now, disparity is basically the inequality between two phenomena that are there. So, under disparity, we can say there could be disparity in terms of educational attainment, in terms of literacy, in terms of employment opportunities, uh, in terms of the distribution of resources in rural and urban. So, all those are understood as disparities. Now, Sofer was the first person who developed this index, which was known as Sofer's index, to understand the disparity. Disparity. The idea was developed in 1974 and uh, what primarily the disparities were addressed were related to the rural urban disparity and male female or the gender disparities what we say. So, so far basically propounded a simple way to understand this disparity. He said that there are two variables that you are trying to take. For example, uh, let's say we understand this by male and female. So we say male literacy versus female literacy. Now across all the values that I have, I would see whether the values for male literacy is higher or the female literacy is higher. Based on that, I would decide which variable would be x2 and which would be x1. So simply, I say, let's uh, let's take an example where male literacy is higher. So I define this parameter as x2 and female literacy I define as x1. The sole reason being x2 should always be greater than or equal to x1 because we want want a positive value for the log because since we are taking log we need a positive value now you might ask why the simple reason is the natural logarithmic values or functions are defined only for the parameters where x is greater than 0 if it is a negative value then the log would be undefined so in order to make our work simpler we put a simple way of depicting it where we say x2 should be greater than or equal to x1. Whichever phenomena is greater would be taken as the numerator in the first case. In the second case, we say that the log of 100 minus x1 divided by 100 minus x2. Now, why we inverse x1 and x2 here? The simple logic is because that uh, the value which is smaller would become bigger when it is kept in the numerator. So 100 minus that uh, the smaller value would be a bigger value and therefore it would be in the numerator. So, so far gave this disparity index formula. Now based on this disparity index formula, he took the value here as 100. Initially he defined it as Q and he said that for Q I take this as 100. Okay. Now, the next important thing we need to understand is why have been the log values taken? If there are two numbers that are big, so let's say the numbers are 90 and 70 versus the number are 40 and 20. So the disparity in the case of bigger numbers would be smaller. I would have smaller values and for the smaller values, the ratio would be bigger. So I divide 40 by 20. My ratio turns out to be 0.5 which is higher than 9 by 7. So, what we uh, need to understand here is, uh, sorry, which is higher than 70 by 90, okay. So, we took 20 by 40 in the first case. So, in this case, when we are taking log of x2 by x1, I take the bigger value, so it would become 40 by 20, so it becomes 2, okay. In the second case, it would become 100 minus uh, 20 divided by 100 minus 40 which becomes 80 by uh, 60 okay so those would be the values that I would take but in the second case my values would change to 90 by 70 which is way smaller than uh, log of 2 which is uh, 40 by 20 as in the previous case and here it would be 100 minus 70 which is 30 divided by 100 minus uh, 90 which is 10 so it would be log of 3 now why did he took the log values the log values were taken to reduce the leveling effect the way the values of disparities would lower down and that's why we use the log functions here again a very important idea is 
with this we calculate the dispar disparity if my values for this d index which is the disparity index that is calculated here are bigger let's say it's 9.9 uh, in the second case it is 0 0.08 so 0 0.9 is higher that means there is higher disparity the disparity is more however when it is 0 0.08 the disparity is less so that is how we understand the calculation of disparity index. Now the same index if I want to plot it on a uh, map of India, I draw the various states and then I say this is 0.9. So let's say the male literacy and uh, the disparity between the male and the female literacy in Rajasthan is 0.9. So this is just a rough values that we are saying, just an estimate. And I say in Maharashtra it is 0.2. Okay, so that means I shade this with a darker shade and a lighter shade and I show that this darker shade indicates higher disparity, lighter shade indicates lesser disparity. So that's a way of visually uh, presenting the values obtained through the SOFAS index. Now there could have been instances where the values could have been greater than 100. SOFA did not thought about it. But it was Kundu and Rao in 1983 who gave this a thought and they said that let's take an example of gross enrollment ratio. Now gross enrollment ratio implies the number of the students who are given education at a particular level divided by the population of that age group. Now into 100 would be the gross enrollment ratio. Now let's say there are children in the age group of 8 who should be in the primary standard or class 3 for example. So I take their population as 200 but if I see at present how many students are there in class 3 I find out that there are more than 200 students. Those who had been of 9 years or 7 years or 10 years are also part of that class. So my number of students who are in that class group that is class 3 are higher so that turns out to be let's say 300 now in this case 300 divided by 200 into 100 this means 150 so my values have gone beyond 150 now i cannot use sofer's index why because we are taking log and 100 minus 150 would give me a negative number log of negative numbers is undefined so log cannot be used. What Kundu and Rao said that we need to use a additive monotonicity axiom. Now what does this axiom imply? It basically tries to explain that we are taking into account any non-negative number and we are adding a constant to it. So let the constant be c. We are adding the constant to all the values that we have and we are incrementing that values. The idea is to reduce the inequality that could be expressed. Moreover, this can also be explained that additive monotonicity axiom works with a continuous function. If I have a no negative number and I am taking the log of the negative number which is undefined, I am breaking the continuity. So additive monotonicity axiom works only when there is continuity. So the values have to be positive or non-negative. So what SOFA did was simply modified the same index rather than using 100, he kept 200. Now they kept 200, uh, Rao and Kundu kept 200 considering the examples that they had traced where the values could have gone up to a maximum of 200. If there was a scenario where the values had gone up far beyond 200, probably we could create another function where 300 could be a possible uh, solution or a possible equation that could be laid down. So this is a modification that has been laid down by Kundu and Rao for the SOFERS index. And either of these index based on the values we have, have been used to measure disparity, understanding me and measuring disparity and then uh, spatially depicting it is very very important part of your research. So uh, we would be covering many more interesting lectures on indices. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.